Uh, we'll give people a couple minutes to uh, come in before we get started. Um, in the meantime, you can add yourself to the attendees on the agenda uh, that I just posted in chat. All right, it looks like we have uh, quite a few people, so uh, we can get started. Um, hello, everyone. This is the uh, Air Gap uh, Working Group um, from CNCF SIGAP Delivery, uh, Friday, May 15th. Um, our agenda is posted in chat. Uh, feel free to uh, add yourself as attendee. Uh, today, we have a demo from uh, Carolyn from Microsoft uh, for CNAV and Porter. Um, so I'll let her take over in, in just a few minutes. Um, but before that, uh, I just wanted to see if anyone had any other um, announcements or um, parking lot items for after the demo to discuss in today's meeting. Great. Well, Carolyn, I see you here. So um, feel free to take over. Uh, I'll final note that this meeting is recorded. So don't say anything you don't want on the internet forever. Um, and with that, uh, Carolyn, it's all yours. Uh, I'm Carolyn Van Slyke. I work on the Deus Labs team under the Azure group at Microsoft. And uh, I've been working for a while on something called cloud native application bundles, uh, which delightfully shortens to CNAB. Um, and specifically, I've been working on the implementation of that. So CNAB is a specification. Uh, there's a couple different implementations of that. You may have heard of Docker app is one. Uh, and another one is called Porter. And I wanted to show this to you today, and it's kind of relevant to your group because uh, it understands how to work with air-gapped networks. You able to see my screen? Yep, looks great. great. Okay. Um, so I, I know I don't know how much time we have for the demo, but. Um, I just want to explain at a really high level what CNAB and Porter, like, I'm going to kind of use them a little synonymously, they're not quite the same, but uh, what it lets you do. And it takes everything that you need to deploy your application and puts it in a bundle and allows you to version it and be able to distribute it using uh, OCI registries, Docker registries and be able to bring it over air gaps, for example, and then be able to work with it using a single command. So even if inside your bundle, you may have many different tools, maybe you're using Docker inside your bundle, maybe you're using Helm, Terraform, maybe cloud specific tools, like you're using uh, GCE or you're using AWS, Azure or something like that. You're using a whole bunch of different bash scripts. Um, you're able to work with your application's deployment as a logical unit and be able to put all the logic for managing not only the deployment, like the installation, but upgrade, maybe discrete uh, actions that you, up, that you do on that deployment, 
like doing a dump of logs or uh, like database dumps, things like that. Um, checking the status and the health of your system. Um, prove it to anything, like it'll run any command, it'll do anything. It's whatever you put inside of it. It's just a packaging system with versioning and security and things like that. Um, and it, it allows you to work with it as a single unit. Um, so what I wanted to show specifically was how to take a bundle that already exists and it references things on a network, you know, references things in Docker Hub, for example, and then be able to move that bundle over an air gap and then be able to rehydrate it and then use it again. So this is an example of a Porter bundle. It uses YAML. Maybe you're happy, maybe you're sad. And uh, so this defines my bundle that I made just for y'all called Whale Gap. And uh, it sneaks a whale size bundle through an air gap. And uh, it's designed to be published, like I said, to an OCI registry. Uh, so this is set up by default to publish to Docker Hub here. It goes to Git Porter Whale Gap and its version. So this is set to be 0, 0.1.0. And uh, I'm gonna skip over some of this stuff and just kind of go to the meat of what does this bundle do? This bundle has, cause like bundles by itself, just packaging unit. So what's inside of it? Inside of it, I've put Helm. Um, you can use anything inside your bundle. You don't have to use, it's not tied to Kubernetes whatsoever, um, but I decide to use Helm. And uh, it's heavily templated. Um, so I'm deploying a chart that I made called Whale Gap. And my chart's right here on my file system. And it has a couple parameters that I'm passing in through my bundle itself. And that's something that's kind of built into CNAM is the ability to pass to the bundle. At, like as a user, I could pass a parameter to it and then it can make it all the way through into the bundle so I can alter what it's doing when it's doing the installation. And the other thing, you know, is Helm needs a cube config file. It needs a credential. So that's the other thing I've done is I've defined that my bundle is going to need when it's installed a cube config file and it says where, where it's going to uh, find it. So at installation, it's going to install this whale gap thing. And then it also knows how to upgrade well gap and it knows how to uninstall it. I could have had a whole bunch more, but we're trying to keep it really small for the demo here. Um, Can I ask a quick dumb question? Of course, no dumb questions. Uh, so when you say Helm, is it assuming that the Helm binary is on the disk similar to um, the, the cube config file and cube control is there or do you bundle that with it? Yeah, so that was the next thing is so Porter and bundles itself. Bundles bring everything you need in order to install your application inside of itself. Um, right now, like a bundle can have multiple different runtimes, um, but at the moment, it's just Docker containers. So a bundle has um, two components to it. It has a definition of what the bundle is. So I, I said there's YAML, but it actually, comes down to this. This is CNAB right now. Like you saw Porter before, this is CNAB. And this is the definition of what the bundle is. But the other part of what makes a bundle is the Docker file, the invocation image, it essentially is the installer that goes with it. It's a considered like a utility Docker container that has Helm, it has kubectl, it has uh, certificates that you may need, scripts, the charts file, like all my uh, files, anything else that I may have needed to do my installation, all get shoved into this uh, container here. So this is a generated Docker file. Porter generates it. Part of CNAB generation is not, that's why I meant like CNAB's one thing, Porter's another. But uh, so Porter generated this Docker file for you just based on the fact that you said mix in Helm. Boom. 
if you'd wanted to like make an artisanal Docker file, like more power to you. But so it made it for you and installed Helm and you were to get it. You could have told it which version you wanted. It can auto detect what you're using and, and get one for you. Um, it also put on kubectl to, uh, it needs it just for a couple extra things. Um, and it will also copy all the files that are on your, in your directory. So it automatically brought in the charts that you had. Does that help answer your question? Yeah, that's perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So the idea with bundles in general is that literally everything you need to run it is right there. So as long as you have a CNAB tool, so it could be, there's a couple out there, like I said, Docker app, there's Porter, there's um, Duffel. Um, they all know how to run these. They're, they work because there's a spec, they work with all of them. As long as you have one of those tools on your file system and you have the runtime, in this case it's Docker, um, you have everything you need to run a bundle, no matter what's inside that bundle. So I have a quick question. So the mix-ins here, so Helm is a built-in mix-in for a Porter then? Yeah, it is. Anyone can make a mix-in. Um, you know, we've made a bunch that are like uh, obvious. Like we could have Kubernetes, we could have um, Docker Compose is a new one. Um, it's a Terraform. Ansible? Uh, we don't have Ansible yet. That'd be a cool yeah. one to have. Um, and so no one can make them. It's just a binary that understands how to talk on standard in and standard out. Actually, um, there is an Ansible mix-in that somebody else has contributed. Sorry? There is an Ansible mix-in that someone else has contributed. It's just not in the uh, standard location. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Do we have it listed in our little search yet? I'm quite sure we don't, but uh, I know where it is and we'll wire it up. Add that for me, Ralph. That'd be great. You betcha. Yeah. Yeah, so anyone can make one. Um, there's no such thing as like an official one or an unofficial one. Um, if, it, if it's on your file system, it'll work. <laughs> Basically, the mix-in though is a kind of a client side or build time plugin then. And then at the runtime inside the Docker image that gets generated, then you don't have to worry about the mix-in anymore because anymore, that's all built in. It kind there's, of sucks it in, I guess. There's two levels of mix-in actually. Um, there's two binaries for every mix-in. There's a client side, which understands, for example, Darwin, Linux, Mac, and it understands how to do things like injecting these lines into your Docker file, because it knows like this is what it takes to get Helm inside of a Docker file. Um, but then when you're actually executing this install part, this is happening at runtime, and you still need that Helm binary, uh, the mix-in binary. Um, and Nixon acts as an adapter between understanding CNAB, because uh, there's, there's some templating going on, there's some environment variables, there's things that are specific to the specification going on inside of this, uh, this Docker container. And then it then handles making calls maybe to a command line tool, potentially to an endpoint, like maybe it's talking directly to a cloud provider or it could be doing something just as, like I've made a mix-in that just prints things to the terminal, uh, like to the console. Um, it could do anything, actually. Um, so there's always two pieces to it, uh, a client side, like a build time and a runtime. Got it. And that's a, that's a Porter specific thing, um, not a CNAB thing. It just kind of helps you make a, uh, a bundle quickly using existing tools out there. Otherwise, uh, you could you could make a, a bundle just by writing a like a really big bash script. <laughs> um, but the nice thing about Porter, like the reason why we did it this way, is it gives you a lot of inspectable metadata that you could use to enforce or do quick uh, find replace and and kind of set policy and things like that. Um, it's more fun to work with this way <laughs> instead of having to like uh, 
reinvent the wheel over and over again. It has a lot of built-in error handling and kind of smarts, understanding uh, how bundles work and more desired state configuration as opposed to maybe uh, commands that it's fine to fail versus if I'm gonna mash upgrade over and over and over again until it works, maybe you want it to work a little bit differently inside a bundle versus as an imperative tool. So Sean was asking a good question. So do the, do the mix-ins for install and upgrade need to be the same kind, same technology? I'm sorry? Do the mix-ins for install and upgrade need to be the same? So do you have to use Helm for both of them in this case? Or could you could use Kubernetes for the like delete or something or? Sure, yeah. Okay. You have full control over everything that happens under install or upgrade. Um, Porter has no opinion. <laughs> um, it, it's Porter at its heart is like a workflow execution engine. Um, and it'll just do whatever is in the YAML. Um, it has a couple like linters to make sure that you don't really shoot yourself in the foot, but um, it doesn't it understand like, what Helm is, for example. So, it doesn't so understand these, what Kubernetes is. Right, so these verbs like install and upgrade, those are those are porter specific verbs. Those are those are specific to CNAB actually. CNAB okay. understands what install, upgrade, and uninstall is. You can also define your own custom ones. Like you could make one called status, if I had my indenting right. You can make one called status and you could do like a Helm command here. Um, or you could just you could just go into bash, for example, and start doing your own things. So if I wanted to create a backup operator or something like that, I could create yeah. a backup. Wow. Yeah, you could do your own things from here. Uh, and then you could then just call these commands yourself. Um, the, the idea behind CNAB is it's extremely flexible. It's whatever you need to be able to do. There's very little, uh, there's absolutely no opinion about what you have to do or understanding about what any of the tools are inside of your bundle. Cool. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about the air gap part about this. Because one thing I'm doing here that you don't always see with uh, Helm is uh, I'm passing in some extra parameters, some set parameters here. I'm giving it very specifically um, what repository and what digest to use uh, when I do my Helm install. And that's for a very particular reason. When I move my uh, bundle across the air gap, I won't have access to Docker Hub anymore. I'm going to have to be able to install by pointing to a repository, uh, a registry like that's on the other side of the air gap. So I need to be able to swap that out. Um, so when you're writing, like Helm has one way of doing this, depending on what you're using, like some other technology you needs some other way to do this little switcheroo. Um, so that's how I'm handling this with Helm. CNAB has built in the concept though that for uh, images, you need to be able to do this switcheroo of be able to copy images from one registry to another. And it has this baked in called uh, image relocation mapping. So in the images section, I can give like a tag to my image. And uh, so my image is called whale say D here. And I just say it's a Docker image. And it's originally coming from Carolyn VS whale say D and here's the digest and I'm using digests because I don't trust tags. Tags can be force pushed and from one day to the next, right? I could be getting different content. I don't want that. So can, I want can you, also, can you, can you also add the tag for like documentation purposes? I could use the tag, um, like as a comment, I guess. Um, right. Porter supports just putting a tag in and we'll resolve the digest for you. Um, but at the spec level, it just supports the digest. Um, yeah. So what this lets me do is that when I put this in here, um, when I make the bundle, it will put this image, it'll grab it from the, the, the registry and it'll actually put it inside the bundle too. So the whole thing's portable. So let's take a look and see what that, that actually looks like. So 
When I run Porter, I have this command archive. And I want to make, there's different ways to work with bundles. I'm showing you a way called stick bundle. This isn't really the normal way, but this is the air gap way. So I'm going to make whale gap. And when you archive it, it just makes a, a GZIP file for you. And I'm going to get it from the registry where this is pushed. So it's at git porter whale gap 01.0. Okay. Um, and I'm not going to run this command because this is a demo and it actually takes a little bit of time because it's 500 megabytes. Um, so it's right here, actually, whale gap tgz. Okay. So let me copy this over somewhere. Let's move this over to temp real quick and let's just take a look at this and see what it looks like. Um, oh, let's make my directory first. Okay. So let's see what gets put inside of this thick bundle. So first, this is the CNAP part. It's the definition of the bundle, okay? And again, this is just the translation of everything that was in that YAML file to the standard uh, spec format and has everything about it, like the credentials, uh, all the parameters, a description, and it also, has a listing of what images are used inside of this bundle. Like this is what we were just looking at a minute ago. The other piece that's in this uh, zip file though is a, a listing of all the different, uh, like a manifest, sorry, of all the different images that are contained here. And we have two different images. Uh, one is the invocation image or the installer for the bundle, okay? And this is something that's always present um, with any bundle. And as you can see, it originally came from uh, Docker Hub, right? This is where I had published it from. And when I archived it, that's where I pulled it from. But the other thing it has is remember I had that images section inside my bundle. So because of that, when I archived it, uh, it also pulled down the image I was using inside my bundle so that I'd be able to bring it over the air gap. So it said, okay, I'm, you're using Carolyn VS whale say D in this specific uh, digest. So then in these blobs are actually all the layers of all the uh, Docker images I'm using. And this lets me move it across the air gap and then republish it somewhere else to another registry. Is there a way to mirror a, uh, a bundle to from one registry to another rather than having to copy it to a TGZ and it, as an intermediary? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a copy command. So I could have done porter copy and then given it two different tags. And it'll actually just shuffle them over. So I could rename it from one to the other. So I do up here. Um, I can give it a source and a destination. Is that what you're asking about? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So and it'll just rename it and bring everything over and everything it's referencing from one to the other. So I'm trying to figure out how do you, so one of the pro, one of the things I was going to demo next week is something called Scopio, which we're yeah. all lamenting on the uh, portability of digests. So how do you, so you, you basically what you said earlier was the digest is a parameter, the, the, the digest is parameterized and so is the image name. And so I'm assuming that you either, you must be updating those because the digest is changing yeah. Okay. That's why we're injecting both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I just add something real quick please, on this Robert, conversation? Uh, yeah. Technically, we rely on the fact that uh, between on the same registry, the content digest should not change if you push the same content. But we do have the option for the user to accept the fact that if the digest changes, the actual digest of the whole bundle is going to change. And uh, essentially it's going to be a different content if, if something changed in your bundle. So, um, it's essentially, uh, by default, if any digest is different, uh, this is going to error out and tell you that 
something is different in the bundle. You can choose to override that and it will generate a different bundle. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. The TLDR is that you can copy bundles across any compliant registry. And if the content digest is the same for every single image in your bundle, the content digest of the bundle is gonna stay the same. So do you, you require then schema to be two images, I assume? Uh, could you repeat that? Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, you require then schema two v two images, like the the Docker images, to make sure that like when I'm pushing between registries, that the shop doesn't change. I'm in trouble with v one. I just tried that yesterday, and it wasn't working. That might be why. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make a new image. It was v two in order to get it to work. Okay. Yeah. No. I'm just wondering if that, that, if that was a constraint. That's that's all. Yeah, I don't know if it was an intentional constraint, but it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, because I found a wonderful image that used whales. It was like four years old and I'm like, perfect, I'll use it. And then it didn't work. So I had to make a new one to get my whales on. So is this uh, multi-architecture enabled? So can I have fat manifest for the porter images and have different architecture groups for that? Or do they have to be tagged independently? I'm trying to think about that. I know that porter right now is specific to one architecture because we've had no asks for anything other than one architecture. Radu, do you know? Uh, when pushing the bundle to a, a registry, uh, architecture is taken into account. So it's generated uh, in in the bundle. You can specify an index that points to a multi-arch image. I'm not exactly sure if at runtime that's hooked up yet, but technically it should support it. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, if you're going to do a copy, then you're going to probably just you're going to have to do a copy multiple times for each architecture and it probably doesn't do a recur, or, you know, full tree copy of all the architectures I'm imagining. That's kind of the default behavior of a lot of tools. I'm just curious, they don't have to answer right now. Which is the default behavior there? The full copy tree uh, for multi-arch or just one? No, most, yeah, most tools ignore. They, they like if you look for, you you get a fat manifest back or man, manifest index, it'll go ahead and grab the architecture of your Docker daemon and it'll just grab that one and move that across. Specifically, the tool that pushes uh, a bundle to an OCI registry is multi-architecture enabled. So it will copy all architectures of an image across registries if they're present. But I'm not okay. sure about the runtime bit. Okay. Yeah, that's the question is, uh, we're just kind of stumped on the runtime. Um, I'd have to maybe look it up and get back to you. It's not a question of like, do we not want to support it? It's just a question of like, did it get coded? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I would expect it to work uh, properly on all our ar architectures in the future. Whether it does yeah. now or not is a great question. We should test it. <laughs> I have another <laughs> semi-unrelated question. Um, do you preserve the original layers um, of the images you're pulling in when you're generating the bundle itself, as in, um, like if I have if if I have you know 20 bundles and they all have the same exact like you know three images or you know whatever, um, do, at at the bundle level, do I get that the merging of those layers or will it differentiate because they're pulled in separately? You know, I guess it's, for me it's you know. Uh, right now, our, our Docker images, when we pull them off into like a tarball to transfer air gapped, it ends up being to be terabytes because we don't achieve any, you know, um, uh, we don't minify until we, you know, rehydrate, I guess. And so, from a bundling perspective, if we can bundle, uh, you know, and we're we're achieving something similar, I'm I worry about then now we're saving a, that same Docker image. 20 times instead of once when we, you know, when we pull it over. Are you, ta you're talking about like, so if two different images ha share a certain subset of layers, are we getting multi multiple copies of those layers? Well, so, well, I guess, um, 
Uh, yeah, I guess, well, it'd be more, yeah, like if you're, t if I'm taking, let's say, you know, Alpine into two different bundles, um, uh, are, and then the, the bundle itself turns into an OCI, OCI compliant, you know, image or whatever. If I push that into, uh, you know, a V2 registry, um, are the images, are the layers from that Alpine deduped um, or because it's been bundled, it gets, you know, it gets kind of messed up. And so they have different layers and therefore I don't achieve, you know, so that that Alpine is essentially taking double space because it's wrapped in a bundle. So we, we preserve the original layers. Um, okay. If you take a look here, um, these, these are the layers that came out of the registry and we don't alter them. Yeah, since you're not putting them in subdirectories for each image, you're naturally going to use the same cached layer, right? If it's already there, I assume. Yeah. The assumption though, is that when you've archived the bundle, you're ready to distribute it to the air gap environment. So you're not as much what, uh, at least the current thinking is that the moment you archive it is prior to using it. If you want to move a large number of bundles between two different environments, then you might want to look into running a registry in your private environment and pushing. So, right. There. So yeah, and that's yeah, that's what I guess I'm asking. So we do run the registry. So when I when I carry all those bundles over and I push all the bundles to a registry, um, do I get that that layer and, advantage? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. When you push the bundle uh, to an OCI registry, we just copy images. So if the layers are there, or if even complete images are already in the registry, we don't copy them anymore. Yeah. Okay, so the image layers are at the same level as the bundle layers is, I guess, the, the question. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so, important cool. thing, technology-wise, you know, layer, layers are portable between Docker registries. It's just the manifests, the top manifests for them that are right. Yeah, I guess I was just wondering if the, the the layers for the images were being like, you know, they're they're embedded into the bundle and so they're lost is I guess what, what the question was. Yeah, flattened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th this yeah. this ties into how our bundle is represented in an OCI registry, which I'll will not get into very much detail, but is an OCI index ultimately. And it points to multiple artifacts. Gotcha. Yeah, it's not something specific. So like I think uh most or all of the layers already here. So if I try to do this, it should go pretty quick because all the layers are there. Yeah. See, and instead of taking like really long time, because like I said it was 500 megabytes, um, it went really quick because the layers were there, it recognized it, and then it only had to push like one thing. So um, then also from a holistic standpoint, like from a higher level standpoint, it's really easy to realize that when you decide you're going to drag a whole bunch of layers across an air gap, the package is going to be big. You don't have a way to avoid that. So you, you need to. Oh, for sure. It's on the, it's, it's the transport layer. That's, that's the big thing. And once you jump into the registry, you get the basic registry behavior that you see. Right. So sure. hence, if you have a bastion server, you won't have that problem because you can just do a copy. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess from a bundling perspective, you, you're you're transferring a significant more amount of data if two bundles share the same image because they've been tarred separately, right? Yes. You know. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, I want to want to just complete the last little. Yeah. Piece sorry, of I'm so I'm, I'm bringing this up topic. Uh, how the kind of switcheroo works when we come across the air gap. Um, so I did the publish here, and so previously I was on that other registry. I can't really do like a full like isolated network here because I'm demoing to you online. Um, so I moved it to another registry, okay? And I have a Kubernetes uh, cluster here um, that's pointed to use uh, this registry. And um, so what I'd like to do then is do a porter install. And I'd like to give it uh, my creds. Um, it has a, it's already pointed to use this credential as uh, my cluster, and then I want to install this bundle. Ah, wow, that's really. Goes without saying that was going to happen. Ralph, don't say that to me. Ah, it's just the demo gods. I'll make it work. Oh, 
I know what happens. Sorry about that. It really helps if you say that you're installing a tag. There you go. Let's try that again. Okay. Okay. See now, now, now that having messed it up and then putting the tags, so you, it's making it obvious that it works. <laughs> yeah. So this is what I really wanted to highlight here is that we did the switcheroo. Okay. We uh, told it what the new digest was when we did the Helm install, and we also told it this is the new repository we want to use, um, so that it's not pointing anymore to um, Docker Hub. It's grabbing it off of the new registry on the other side of the air gap. Uh, and I just want to prove it to you. So let's take a look at the pod that it spun up. Okay, so let's do it. Let's take a look at this. And we can see. So, so when you publish, when you publish this um, Porter image to your local repo, it injected the new digests as it discovered them. That, no, never mind. They're they're embedded. Yeah, they're embedded in that that archive, right? Yeah. And then when I ran that publish command, uh, Porter publish. If we do a little bit of scrolling here, um, I ran Porter publish, and what it did is it went through every single one of those those blobs, right? It went through the manifest, and it went here are the images that are inside of this this zip file. And then it published those to the registry on the other side. Um, so it grabbed it, went through all the different layers, reassembled it, made an image, and pushed it all back up. All right, so it's preserving the manifest then. And so it is preserving the digest then. Mm. No? The digests are specific to the registry. Right, right? No, it, if, if, okay, if, if, if the registry is OCI compliant, they should preserve the, the digests. And okay. in this case, it's, uh, I think it's Azure Container Registry, which does preserve between Docker Hub and ACR. They're both OCI compliant in this perspective. And most of the time, all, most registries strive to, towards keeping the digests. So I think in this case, they're actually preserved, the image digests. Okay. So anyway, the install process is what's actually pushing the images into that registry so they can be consumed by uh, the, the cluster yeah. be pulled. So I'm going to show you the, the, the payoff here. Yeah, the publish. Install oh. just tells uh, just tells Helm to tell Kubernetes to pull them. I thought you just said publish only published the Porter image, but you're saying it's also publishing the embedded images. Yeah, it's everything oh. that's used uh, by your application. So it includes the application image. So they, um, they, set it, they, they get um, translated to the same like uh, namespaces and all that kind of whatever paths, path components were in the image names. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's where the relocation map that Carolyn was mentioning. Yeah, got it. Okay. So just to prove to you that it actually worked and we have a functioning whale gap on the other side. Let's come over here. Take a look at it. And this is working. Yay. Um, yeah, it did, it did rename it. Um, so previously it was called my image that was running. Uh, my, my image was called um, like Carolyn VS whale gap. And so now it's Git Porter Azure ACR whale gap. So it did rename it. It just took like the registry, swapped out the registry's names, but then preserved the final path part. Yeah, so basically if someone's gonna build a mix-in, their, their technology is gonna have to have basically top-down awareness of all the image references so it can do this proper translation then. Likewise, uh, it's like a it's gonna have to publish all of their, all of their um, images as values. So the mixin didn't need to understand this. Um, the templating handled subbing this in. Um, so the mixin just needed a way to accept the templated values. Uh, so Helm was pretty easy because it had set, right? And it just allowed me to, to insert repository and digest. Um, depending on what else it is you're trying to do, 
it, you well, I'm just saying you have to have both, right? So your backend technology has to be built in such a way to accept those as parameters. Yes. And the mix-in has to be able to accept those parameters and pass them on. Correct. Yeah. You need to be able to wait to, to send these through all the way. Yep. Yeah. It would be really great if mix-ins could understand what was being used and be able to help report this back to Porter so that you're not having to fill this out by hand. But, uh, you know, with Helm, it's kind of like, you know, this information could have been anywhere. So you kind of have to type it in yourself. But... But you, you kind of dictate the fact that the repository and the digest or the tag all have to be in independent fields. They can't just be one field and parsed out or anything like that. Um, it's separate because of how the chart was written. Okay. Um, so if I, if I take a look at my chart real quick and I go to my templates deployment here. Um, I'm just trying to right. figure out where they relate, where the, <laughs> where the magic is for the automatic, where the, where the uh, API. Yeah, is. this wasn't magic. It was just, it just had to do with like, this was how the chart was written. Sure. It, yep. it had, it split into a repository and a digest. If it was a single value that I could have put in, like if I go look at the values here, if it had been just a single thing, then I could have done a single thing. But most charts have it done this way instead so you can easily swap out just the version used, you know, just the tag. Um, honestly, most charts are written by tag instead of digest too, which is problematic, but. Yeah, I've, yeah, we've just gone done an entire rewrite of all of our software to not do that anymore. We're just doing an image ref. <laughs> yeah. So that, that actually was one of my questions. Do you have to use digest in this, in this regard? Like, do we have to basically go back and change all of our, our things to use no. digest? the tags or will it preserve the tags um you you could have done this okay you could have done that and porter would have figured it out for you you just lose the extra assurance right and so it doesn't it doesn't may have been the, force pushed right it doesn't take the uh the tags with the manifest when you grab a digest um so what, what porter will do here is it will, at build time, when you build the bundle, mm -hmm. it will resolve this tag to the digest. And then when it builds the bundle, because everything turns into a bundle at the end of the day, mm -hmm. um, it has to be resolved to a content digest. So it'll right. make it an immutable digest for you, right? right. But yeah, so it's easy you to lose get the, the tag. Right, but when I so so when so when I when I rehydrate this in my air gapped environment, is do what does it does it add the tag to the upstream registry or not? No. Okay, so then my Helm chart would fail because it would need it would need to use a digest instead of a tag. The Helm so chart wouldn't fail because um, it still would have this tag. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. That's a really good point, and it's a rather easy fix on when we're pushing the bundle. Yeah. So you kind of have you have to tag it with something, though, don't you? Otherwise, the most some of the registries will just automatically <laughs> delete it if they're untagged. Well, it is a reference in an OCI index after you pushed it. But it's yeah. not the not not of the tag form that the original repository had it, and so the the real so this is a great. Uh, thing to point out, uh, sort of at the stage we're at right now, the expectation is that if you're pulling something from online across an air gap, that you're doing that with some desire to have confidence it's precisely the same artifact. And so the original implementation is based on digest because that's the only way we can give you any kind of verification or validation that you're really installing precisely the same thing that you had in an online environment. Um, and tags just don't give you that help. They're just, right. not, they just don't give you enough confidence. But alternatively, you know, you could, uh, we could actually, you know, you could re-tag them. Um, but we're expecting that, it, so at least, at least uh, in the current situation, we're sort of expecting that the bundle owner would actually understand that, because you have to sort of build it a certain way to make it a thick bundle. So that the bundle owner would understand that modifying the chart inside the bundle to accept digest would probably be part of their workload and their yeah. workflow. 
where my concern is, is um, um, this is a huge issue we've had in general is many, many operators will hard code tags into Go code um, that, especially if they're helpers, like, you know, I need busybox 1.2.8 uh, or 1.28 and it's hard coded because that's the helper and who doesn't have busybox. And so they don't allow you to override that. You can override a lot of the other ones, but um, if that tagged, you know, image doesn't exist, it doesn't have it's like you know oh I need to do a bash script or whatever and so that's an issue we've we've ran into a lot we actually had to open up a bunch of PRs but it's just you know it's something that it's a bunch of extra work if you yeah have. no that sounds horrible and if you have individual people that I need to go beat up to do the right thing <laughs> like that sounds just awful do they usually give you the ability to change the registry but not the tag or digest but we even well often it'll just say you know busy box with no registry and it assumes that it resolves and we've solved that using you know we use container d and we do mirrors so like you know docker.io and whatever it goes to our registry so yeah handle it that way and we also you know turned off force pushing on our registries you know in in our in our environment so we have some resemblance of you know it hasn't been force pushed but yeah it's it's not perfect but it's just you know it's more of a, i'm just trying to understand like we can't adopt this until we, we basically go all in with digest is what it sounds like. Um, yeah, that, that's is, a really good point. Yeah. And uh, it's just, we've never actually had the requirement for a digest for the pushed images for the relocated images until now. So it's a rather easy fix on, on our side yeah, when pushing. I don't think it's a large change, honestly, to, to add the tag. No. And an earlier version of, of the pushing functionality actually tagged images. We just didn't port it over because it, no one actually needed it until now. So thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question. Um, I think you mentioned something when you showed the bundle.json uh, that that was, is that the, that's the actual spec that CNAB conforms to and Porter creates that? Is that, what I'm understand? is that what I'm understanding? So when you said that at the spec level, it only supports digest, that's what you, that's what we're kind of talking about here is that yeah, you yeah. could do a bunch of stuff with tags, but the spec in this bundle JSON doesn't have any ability to do anything with tags. Is that, yep. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Porter, Porter has a tag there and then it resolves the content digest for you. And then that's what it's using to, to fill this in. Um, but because we don't have this, this is what we want to add. <laughs> yeah. And, and so this probably means that if I'm using a different implementation, I think you said like Duffel or one of the other ones that I could only expect to use digest, right? Like, Correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's the only way of making sure you're running the same right. content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oops. Stop trying to autocomplete for me. Here we go. Yeah. Um, Super great conversation because that's a it, it's very interesting to hear the problems that you run into, such that we can think about how to handle them. That's that's like all I had to show, by the way. I know we didn't really touch much on like how CNAB works in general, but I hope uh, we filled in enough of the blanks that you see how the air gap scenario works. I mean, I think this has been awesome and I really appreciate it. Do you, I mean, could, do you know enough to give a, a quick rundown, like Porter versus the competition? Like, you know, what, you know, how do you, what, what did you guys, you know, what's your, you know, um, interpretation of the, the, the spec versus others and, and how there's differences? Sure. Um, so like I said, there's, there's three uh, public uh, implementations right now. Um, there's Duffel, which is the, it's the reference implementation of the specification. Um, so that means that it's, it's not really, it's more intended to vet the spec and not really intended to be like a, it's not really actively developed, I'll put it that way. Radu, you can check me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, people work on it when we're changing the spec, you know what I mean? And then we'll, we'll make changes and make sure that it supports the spec. But beyond that, there isn't ongoing development on it. Um, and the way Duffel works is you edit the Docker file yourself. So you, whatever you need inside of that installer invocation image, you put in there. Um, and then you're given a bash script, a run script. And whatever you put in there, that's what it'll do. Uh, 
when it comes to running install, upgrade, or uninstall, or custom action. Um, but there isn't any um, like auto magic or like building blocks like mm -hmm. Porter or Docker app would give you. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like there's since there's no opinion, you can do whatever you want. Um, the other one is Docker app, which is very similar to Docker Compose, basically. Um, I haven't used it terribly much, but that's the way I think about it. It's more focused on the deployment of services that were already defined using Docker Compose. Uh, and then so it, it conforms to the spec and everything. But deploying um, infrastructure isn't really, it's not really focused on that. So deploying, um, for example, like a, say like an S3 bucket, uh, isn't really what it's intended for. I'm not even sure if you could do that, to be honest, with Docker app. Someone fact check me there, right? Ralph, it's not it's not really good, one of its strengths. Right, awesome. Um, so then, then there's Porter, um, and Porter is really built around being able to reuse um, and adapt existing DevOps tools and existing tools that we use to do everything. And it, it's 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 essentially like I said, a workflow execution engine to be able to plug them all together and adapt them so that you can pass inputs like parameters and credentials um, and outputs between them. So if one step within install created a cube config, you can pass it along to the next one, or maybe it made a database connection stream. It's basically allows you to pass information between them and kind of string together a series of steps between all your different tools that probably weren't meant to work together and hopefully make something a little bit easier to manage um, and deal with error conditions, edge cases, um, and make something a little more robust than a monolithic bash script. Um, and that's kind of the, the intent is that instead of making something that replaces or is a giant wrapper script around like Helm and Terraform and QBCTL, it, it gives you a little bit more easier ways to work with them. Oh, I think you said this. Um, that's very actively developed because I get paid to work on it. <laughs> so, so I think you said it this at the beginning, but I want to make sure. So I think the Porter executable, the client tool, um, mm -hmm. that does use Docker directly, right? So you have to have Docker installed because it interacts with that? Um, it needs to be able to connect to a Docker uh, connection, either. So like it, either, it either needs a local Docker socket um, or it needs to connect to a remote one. So for example, we run Porter in Azure Cloud Shell. Okay. Um, and at that point, it's a remote Docker engine that we connect to. Okay. And and is it have to be Docker or is it any, it's a, would, I guess, would Podman work is the question. It just needs to be OCI, sorry. I say Docker when I should say. I just, I just want to clarify. Um, and so I guess my next question is if, no, well, I don't want to take everyone's time. So does anyone else have questions? Because I've asked a lot. Okay, cool. Um, so is there any concept of like, um, so well, so when you when you deploy a bundle, um, does it, um, you, does it have any, any like chaining or is there any dependency management with it of, um, so like one of our, our, we wrote an internal tool, right? Because we essentially need Istio installed pretty early on because it has a, a mutating webhook. And if you don't have the mutating webhook before you install things, nothing gets mutated. Um, does port bundle bundles have any kind of concept of that or not really? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we have, the only one that implements it is Porter at the moment. Um, we have a beginning of a spec for dependencies in the CNAV spec. Um, and so Porter lets you specify one level deep who you're depending on. So like my canonical example is I have a WordPress bundle and I depend on my, on my SQL bundle, for example. Uh, it will run the MySQL bundle first and then pass outputs up into the WordPress bundle because it needs that connection string, you know. Um, and then it will then use that and then tie them together and then you can work with them uh, as a unit. Um, but we're trying to bring that to more uh, mature level. Um, so I'd say the next, over the summer, we're going to be working to really bring uh, more scenarios to the dependency spec, being able to have 
uh, more level and be able to order your dependencies and um, be able to satisfy dependencies from something that was, say, installed weeks ago uh, and things like that. Um, there's a little bit of work we need to do that's happening right now to be able to enable these scenarios. But yes, sorry, awesome. long answer, yes. <laughs> If anyone's interested, by the way, Porter is for contributors or just people who have ideas. Like everything you're seeing right now is super exciting for me. And if you want to hop on our Slack, we're in mm -hmm. CF Slack, um, mm -hmm. or if you just want to like open an issue and drop ideas or leave comments, um, we really want feedback or I don't know, anything, any engagement you're interested in uh, would be amazing because I don't know. You're all, you're doing the things that we're really interested in learning more about. Yeah. So just one more time, I have to ask a dumb question because I maybe missed it at the beginning. The relationship of Porter to CNAV is it the same team that's essentially working on two independently, or different people completely. Um. So my team helped start, found something. Pick a verb. Um. The CNAV specification, uh, but it was collaborative between a whole bunch of different companies. Um, and a number of people on my team are maintainers for the CNAV specification, myself included. Uh, and then I'm the found creator of Porter. Um, so okay. I'm just really into CNAV and making bundles. Porter just exists to be an implementation of CNAV, essentially. Okay. Yeah. So I, I wrote my competing version of this. <laughs> okay. CNAB, but I had to do it at the same time CNAB came out, though it wasn't quite ready for the scenarios we had. So it's interesting because you and I have taken different angles. At so mine's mine's called the case specification, call it application, uh, call it, oh, whatever it math stands for, <laughs> container applications for enterprises. Anyway, so it's out there on Git too, but it has a whole different perspective on how, um, what, what the opinionated parts and the unopinionated, unopinionated parts are. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. You know, it's like an 80% overlap maybe. Let's cool. take a look at this more closely again. Yeah, I, I think this is an area that really does need a lot more innovation and people just, using it, trying it in different environments in production and seeing what really works when like you meet reality, if that makes sense. Um, and, and it's definitely like, this is V1. Um, I think V2 will look very different. Uh, speaking so. of things people should be using, I just want to point out <laughs> that there's also a security spec that we are actively working on. So if you're interested in that part, uh, essentially, we integrate with the Tuff and Intoto upstream specifications, and we're working on having working implementations for both of these. So just if you're interested in this, feel free to ping us in the CNAP channel or Tuff or Intoto channels. For the purposes of air gap, Roddy, you should probably describe just the high level set of features that come even to air gapped environments. Uh, I'm not exactly sure whether we have the time for that or not. That's why I just wanted to briefly pointed out. If we do have the time, I'm happy to. Basically, you can do supply chain signing and then bring that metadata along with you. And if you have the right uh, access to the original metadata server, you can, can, you can validate the supply chain and arbitrary. Uh, yeah, essentially there's data. two parts of it. One which is signing the bundle itself using a notary service, just like, just like you would sign a regular container image. We're just using notary in the same way as Docker Content Trust. So you're uh, signing a bundle in the same way. And then the second part, which is uh, if you have in, if you have a supply chain layout using Intoto, you can bring that up into the notary metadata as well. So you can uh, have both of them. Specifically for AirGap, you still need to have access to the original notary instance where you push the signature, but that's something that's gonna change with notary v2. If you're interested in that, I'm very happy to chat. Prashank, I know, is in the call as well. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the summary. Great. Does anyone have anything else before we close out? 
Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Carolyn, and everyone else from Microsoft that chimed in. Uh, we really appreciate it. This is interesting. Um, and uh, Chris, are you still uh, able to demo next week? Or yeah, next I certainly week? can. Um, Scopio will be much easier. It's really small compared to this. So um, if you have other topics, I would definitely pile them on. OK, sounds good. Maybe we could have a follow-up discussion now that people can play around with Porter and, and see what people think. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye.